2002 when we played football, we wrestled with theater, newspapers, yearbook, teacher educator, student government, and was a state officer for FBLA. Now he is an assistant customer service manager at Baker's on 132nd and Maple. He is also a state champion football coach, an award-winning speaker and journalist, and has started his own speaking and mentorship business. He is soon launching his website, coachadair.com. Please welcome Jay Parker Adair. Exciting to be back here. Like I said, I graduated in 2002. A couple things have changed. So right now, I want you to think about what's going on on TV, what a lot of people are really excited about at this moment. Some of you guys might have skipped some class, looked at your phones, you're like supposed to be studying. I don't know. We got this March Madness going on. Uh, Very exciting. Uh, yeah. Two weeks from tonight. You're going to have a group of tall, sweaty guys that are going to go climb a ladder and cut down some string. It seems really weird. In any other context, it makes no sense. But what they're doing right there is they're realizing a dream, something they have worked for so long to accomplish so hard, all of these different adversities, and they outlast 347 other teams to climb that ladder and take their championship. There are three rungs on that ladder. The first rung is care. The second rung is prepare. That third rung I like to call deliver with flair. Those are the three rungs on the ladder of success. It's a tall ladder. There's a lot of space between rungs. And you have to hit all three to get to the top to claim your own championship. To be a success to do something others never even dreamed was possible. And I've been in your shoes, maybe not yours, those look a little too pointy for me, but <laughs> I've been here. I've been all these, done all these activities. And it's really exciting to come back here to see you guys in the same spot that I was. You have all of this potential and all of these things that you can accomplish. I want to help you get there. The first rung is the absolute most important, care. Forget everything else. If you don't care about the thing that you are trying to accomplish, you're not going to get there. I want you guys to close your eyes for a minute. I want you to think about the one thing that is more important to you than anything else in the world. The thing that you would give up breathing challenge you a little bit here. I don't want you to think of a specific person or group of people. So don't say your family or your friends. I want you to really think about something that is just for you that you need to accomplish. Get a good vision of that. Because it's the thing that is worth dying for. It is the thing that 10, 15 years down the road, if you haven't accomplished, won't be able to sleep. It's going to bug you for the rest of your life. Go ahead and open your eyes. That thing right there, the thing that you had in your mind, it's different for each of you, I'm sure. That's the thing that's going to drive you. That's the thing that you will care about. And maybe it changes over the years. And maybe you haven't quite discovered what it is yet, and that's fine. But you went down my checklist here of all the things that I did at Ron Colley. I think there's probably five or six I missed still. But all of that is the process of finding what you care about. When you find that, and it becomes more important to you to accomplish that than to breathe, now you're making progress. Now you've hit that first rung. When you get to that second rung, 
now you're in for struggle. Now things become difficult. Now things are going to hit you so hard and so fast that you're not going to know what's coming. That is where the challenges come. That is where all the self-doubt comes. And that's where you start to think, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to accomplish that? I see a lot of soccer players in the room. Is that right? You didn't just go out there and, and play a game, right? You, you practiced at least once or twice, I'm assuming. Good. So you put in a lot of work. And the people that are successful at playing soccer didn't just start a week ago or two weeks ago or even a year ago. This is something they've been doing for a long time. So people that are state champions don't just pick it up. And even the ones that have played for a long time, they don't just step on the field without any extra practice. It's something they are constantly preparing for. And each time you have a new opponent, you're preparing for that opponent, how you're going to play in that game. You go back to March Madness. The teams that are most prepared are the ones that are going to succeed. Now, does everybody know the story of the tortoise and the hare? Okay. Who won the race? The tortoise. Okay. Why did the tortoise win the race? You obviously don't know the story. And the hare got caught. The reason the tortoise won the race is because he was more prepared. The hare thought he was hot stuff. He knew he was fast. Didn't have to train. Didn't have to practice. The tortoise, on the other hand, and they don't tell you this in the story, but it's true. He's out there training. He's hitting the weights. He's got his long distance training going on. He's, he's got a treadmill, tortoise treadmill. It's on there. It's on eBay. You'll find it. But he's working out. He's got his little turtle montage, like Rocky style. Eye of the Tortoise. Have you seen that song? No, I just made it up. But that's OK. But he's working really hard. And so when he's out there racing, his little turtle legs are going as fast as he possibly can. And maybe to us, it doesn't look like much. But that's what's going to carry him to victory. So it may be slow and steady to us, but that turtle's sprinting to the finish line. You look at all of these upsets that we see in the March Madness tournament, and you see a, a 12 seed knocking off a 5 seed, and it happens literally every single year for the last 13 years, I believe now. Is it because that team is better? Or is it because that team is better prepared to win? You can beat somebody. You can pass somebody that's better than you if you're willing to work harder and smarter than they are. It happens all the time the time. There will be people in your class right now, your graduating class, that may have better grades, that may be the ones that are supposed to succeed more, but if you're willing to work hard enough and find that thing that you care more about, you're going to pass them, no problem. Because at some point, it's too easy for them, and they get complacent. But you, you're willing to work at it. You're willing to say, Forget everything else. I want this more than anything, and I am going to take it. Nobody gives it to you. Life is not easy. There are going to be times when you are not going to want to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to work at the thing you need to work on. But sometimes 4 o'clock in the morning is the only time you have to get things in. When I wrestled, we had two-a-day practices all season long. So I was up. 4 o'clock in the morning, every single day. I stayed after school every single day, and we had our practice. Then, since this coach is no longer here, and I've graduated, so statute of limitations, I had my own key to the wrestling room, and I would practice on my lunch break, I would practice uh, during my study hall, and I would practice during my gym class. So right there, that's five practices a day. I wasn't good at math. Five practices a day. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would go and work with my club team. That's an insane. That was 30 hours a week that I put in to wrestling practice because I wanted to be a champion. And I could beat people that were better than me that had been doing it longer because I was going to put in the hours. So whether it's something in school, whether it's that thing in your mind that means more to you than anything else, whether it's you want to be a speaker, you have a story that you have to tell, or 
but right now, you're the quietest person in the room. You work hard enough. You want it bad enough. You can do that. And that's when that final rung comes into play. You've struggled. You've pulled yourself up onto that second rung. Now you're still looking up there. There's that net to cut down. It's game time. The ball goes up. It's time to play. It's time to deliver. That is the toughest part sometimes. That's the, that's the part that tripped me up for a long time. My junior year in high school, I had done fairly well in wrestling. and I was expected to go to the state tournament. The match that decided whether I was going to go or not came out really strong. I had a 5-0 lead with a few seconds left in the first period. And I go to hit a move that would have put my opponent away. And I missed it, went straight to my back. He tied it up at the end of the first period. And I never recovered from that. I lost the match, didn't go to state, went to my senior year. That's when I had all of that practice that I went through. The day before the state tournament, or the day before the first tournament of the season, I blew out my shoulder. I had to have an operation that cost me the season, cost me my career. So that junior year, that match where I did not deliver was the last wrestling match I ever had. You talk about a lesson to learn right there. You have to seize that moment when it's there. When it's time to deliver, you have to trust your preparation. You have to have that confidence that says there's nobody that's going to beat me. When I go into a job interview, when I go into a situation where I'm up for a contest or anything like that, I've walked in there and I know it's over. I had a speech contest a month ago and we drew our, our numbers for who was going to speak at one point. I said, it's over. Who's coming in second? I went and won both of those contests. That's the attitude that you need to have. And that's backed up by how much you care. That's backed up by the preparation you put in. And when you stand there and you're confident, you know that you're going to deliver every single time. It's going to come along the way when you have little mini challenges that you're met with. And you deliver. So if it's a challenge like showing up to work on time, anybody have a problem showing up to work or school or practice on time? Mrs. Aiken, did I have a problem with showing up on time? Just a little bit? Okay, that is something that I have had to work on a long time. Turning in your homework on time, big guilt right here. You don't have to raise your hand, so you know who you are. Uh, but find those little challenges. Find where you can deliver. If it's important enough for you to succeed, even if the, the reason that you care is because you just want an A in that class just to make everybody mad, that's awesome. That's a driving force right there. I was in math club in college. I know, I was one of the cool kids. <laughs> and, and I had no idea what was going on. I, I was just there because it was like a spectator sport and they had free snacks. But I took, I, I liked math a lot. I, I, statistics are very interesting to me. But I really liked math so much I took algebra three times in college. The same course three times in college. Probably because I failed the first two times. <laughs> but that third time, I was so mad. I was so fed up. I was so sick of losing. I was, I did not want to take this course ever again. I wanted to get that course done and get rid of it and be all right, no more math. I'm going to use a calculator forever now. So in that class, because I worked so hard, I showed up to class every single day, worked extra. Not only did I pass that class, I got an A in that class. So take that. <coughs> is, is Cook Baron still here? Yeah, yeah so Baron. that class, it's so easy, it's unreal. <laughs> But it's those little things, it's those little things, those little victories, those little challenges that you can overcome, they're going to help you deliver. So, when the team 
in two weeks from tonight, steps up on that ladder, and they cut down the nets. I want you guys to remember those three rungs. The very foundation of what you have. That first step, that if you don't hit that step, nothing else matters. That's the one that you've got to start with. You have to hit them. That next one, you have to prepare. Be smart with it. Work your tail off. And don't let anything get in your way of you and your vision. That third one, deliver with flair. Every single time, deliver, deliver, deliver until it just becomes a habit that you know when you stand up there, game over. You guys have state leadership conference coming up. I hope you guys are all going. It sounds like you have a good group of people going. It's a chance to get inspired. I went just because I somehow got enough points to qualify as a sophomore and went and got super inspired, said, okay, I'm going to be a state officer next year, state reporter. Set up an email address with that FBLA reporter, 2002. It was going to happen. I knew I was going to deliver. We went in for our state officer interviews. I had one other candidate going against me. And she, had a, she, finally, she met me, saw the confidence that I had, and took her name out of the running for my position and went and ran against somebody else. She knew I was going to deliver. She ended up becoming state, state secretary, was one of my best friends, was my prom date that year, which was really cool. But find something to be inspired about. Get excited there. There are so many different things in business. You can do anything. If you like stickers, talk about stickers. Make a business about stickers. Go for it. I am all in. Find something that really, that you really, truly care about. That if 15 years from now, if you're not doing something with that, you're going to, you're going to really hurt. So the last thing that I'm going to tell you is I'm getting ready to launch my website, coachadair.com, A-D-A-I-R. Mrs. Aiken will have that information. Any, everybody on Twitter, most of you guys on Twitter, cool. I am at the Coach Adair. Find me on there. I'm creating a special hash, hashtag starting today. I want you guys to tell me what the thing is that you care about. You guys are the first group to get to do this. I want to work with you guys because this is home for me. This is my FBLA group. The hashtag is Coach I Care. I want you to tell me, just tweet me, hashtag Coach I Care. I'll follow the hashtag, and I'm going to help you accomplish the thing that you care about. You can find that care. I'm going to help you prepare, and that way, when the time comes, you'll deliver with flair.